What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we're back with another edition of the viewer comments videos, where as you might guess from the title, I answer your questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, suggestions, whatever. Before I get into it, I wanted to quickly plug my Patreon that I launched, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago, something like that. Patrons get access to a private Discord server, depending on what tier you're in, you can also get access to an audio podcast feed of all the videos, so I put up an MP3 of just the audio for anybody who's asked about that. There's also a chance to get feedback on your band or podcast or YouTube channel's marketing and a bunch of other cool perks. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below. And thank you very much to all the people who've supported me so far. I sincerely appreciate it. You guys take the sting out of it when my videos get demonetized, which happens much more often than I wish it would. Anyhow, with that out of the way, let's get into it. A couple comments on my video about Screamo covers, about the like Punk Goes Pop series. First up, from Newfound Glory. Thanks for including us in this, but don't forget about MXPX's On The Cover. Good call. I actually totally forgot about that album, and that was a big one for sure. And another comment on my Screamo Covers video. This one, a little bit of a clarification, I guess you could say, from I Set My Friends On Fire. You said the Devil Wars Prada opened up the floodgates to the Screamo rap covers, and that just simply isn't true. We blew up so hard after making that a thing that MySpace deleted our page twice because they couldn't believe the amount of plays and friends requests we were getting. After everyone saw how huge it became, all the other Screamo bands hopped on the bandwagon and started blowing up because of that idea. I think we made a huge impact, and you just made it seem like we just did a cover but didn't start it. Hopefully you can clarify this in other videos. And actually, yeah, I think that's fair. So thank you for getting in touch. And make sure you check out the latest I Set My Friends on Fire album on Spotify. It's called Astral Rejection from Brando C. A lot of the bands you cover I love listening to. I sometimes never really know why I like their music so much or why I gravitate towards listening to them over others. It's cool to see someone analyze and reveal the reasons why. It's like mindlessly loving fried chicken and having someone blow your mind by revealing to you the 11 secret herbs and spices. Actually, that's a great way of putting it. What I want to do with this channel and videos like that is try to understand why people like the things that they like, why they don't like the things that they don't like, and why things are or aren't commercially successful. Next, from JP Jacobs. I think that death metal artists don't give a crap about being marketable. More power to them. Money ain't everything. Well, that might be true, but why don't you leave that up to them to decide whether they want to make money or not? How weird is it to just decide on their behalf that they don't need to make money? Why don't you leave that up to them? I hope somebody comes along at your job and is like, you know what, JP? Money's not everything. I don't give a crap about giving you this raise and you shouldn't care either because money's not everything. Next one from Kawanao or however you say it. This channel is getting deep into commercial territory. I understand that you're making a living and looking for mass appeal, but what's special to me is coverage of more obscure genres and bands. I think that people might really dig being newly exposed to that stuff too. What killed 2000s power violence would be really cool. Mind Eraser, Weekend Nachos, Iron Lung, Punch, Ar Old Harm's Way, Trash Talk, etc. First of all, there's an assumption here that I'm talking about bands like Green Day and Blink-182 and Avenged Sevenfold and Fall Out Boy because I believe that that's like the road to commercial success, but that I don't really want to talk about it. But I do want to talk about it. I like those bands. I enjoy talking about them. And that is the reason why I talk about them. Not because I think it's like the road to commercial success or something like that. If all I wanted to do was make money, there's a lot of other things I could be doing with my time that make me a lot more money than YouTube ever will. Actually, I guess there's three things that I want to say because number two, there's an assumption that I want to talk about the stuff that he mentions here and I don't. Obviously, I know about hardcore because that's what I came from. That's what I grew up on. I still like I'm still friends with tons of these people I've known from the 90s hardcore scene for 20 years or more. But I'm not actually interested in talking about weekend nachos or trash talk or 2000s power violence. And third, I don't think you're giving me enough credit for talking about the obscure stuff that I do talk about. For example, in my Fallout Boy video, I spent quite a bit of time talking about their roots in the 90s DIY hardcore scene with like Race Trader and V and Reich and all that kind of stuff. I did a whole video about Spaz. I did a video about Earth Crisis that has over 100,000 views now. In my Metalcore video, obviously, I talked about 90s hardcore a bunch. Actually, in almost all my videos, like real DIY, hardcore, whatever, is part of what I talk about on there. And that's not because it's like some calculated strategy on my part. It's just part of how I see things. And these videos all have like six figure view counts, right? So I don't think it's really fair to say that I'm somehow ignoring DIY hardcore because because actually the truth is, I think I'm probably talking about that stuff on a bigger scale than really anybody else. 
And a couple comments on my video about adulting, about things I wish I knew in my 20s, which by the way, is maybe my favorite video I've ever made. So definitely check that one out if you haven't. From Ultra Wolf Lord, this video really snapped me into reality. I actually put the majority of my record collection on Discogs after watching this once I realized half of the records I bought were purely for Instagram clout. I, I was definitely majoring in a minor thing. I had to keep a few holy grails though. Awesome, I love to hear that. And by the way, I'm not saying that like you shouldn't collect records, right? I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do anything. I'm saying you should do what actually makes you happy and in this case what he's saying is man I realized that collecting records actually doesn't make me happy like I was just doing it to impress a bunch of people I don't even give a fuck about so why am I doing this another one on the same video from Emily Liz from the ages of 20 to 22 I completely fucked my priorities went from being on the Dean's list in college to being put on academic probation and getting my financial aid revoked all of this because I was so immersed in the music community that I felt like if I missed a show my life was over thank you so much for the valuable advice I feel so much better knowing someone else relates to what I've been through for sure like if it makes you feel any better just know that almost everybody in the scene makes the same mistakes because we all ended up here for similar reasons right so it makes sense that our brains are wired kind of similarly and therefore that we make a lot of the same mistakes so if it makes you feel any better at least know that there's plenty of other people out there doing the same dumb shit as you other people figured it out and you can too okay here's a good and tough one from you what fam finn what do you do when you're unhappy doing fucking nothing don't have people to lift you out of a rut feel years go by like nothing and can't build the will to work on changing. I know the answer may be to get a therapist, but I don't have the money for that either. Okay, take my opinion on this with a grain of salt because I'm obviously not a psychiatrist and I would not pretend to be able to diagnose somebody from a YouTube comment, but that sure sounds to me like depression. And if you have depression, please, please, please find a way to get professional help. Even if you don't have insurance and you have to pay for it out of pocket, it's worth it. Like what price can you possibly put on your mental health? I actually made a whole video specifically about this topic, about mental health in the kind of creative world of music and you know whatever other creative things are out there. I went into a lot more detail in that video about exactly what to do, in my opinion, if you find yourself in this situation. So there's a link to that in the description. Please watch that video and just please take care of yourself. Like depression is a serious deal. Don't take it too lightly. Don't just slog through life dealing with depression because you don't have to. And last one in that video from Thomas Insall. I'm teaching high school personal finance for summer school in the rural Midwest, Missouri. I've been using Ramit, Mr. Money Mustache, Fire Stuff. This video is totally gonna air in class tomorrow. Dude, I love that. Like, how cool is it that one of my videos aired in a high school personal finance class? I love that. Thank you very much for that. And on my suicide silence video, this one is from Darth Vader. Again, probably not the real Darth Vader, but you never know, maybe Darth Vader's a fan. <laughs> People like you and Loudwire are making conscious efforts to be positive and that energy is going to catch on. I'm so sick of haters and nerds. It's a toxic syndrome of the internet, but we might actually be coming out of it. People like you give me hope for the future of our beloved genres. Awesome, thank you. It makes me super happy to hear that because remember, we don't have to let the shitheads and assholes win. We can change the culture. We can change the conversation. It happens one person at a time. Like just every time you decide to put somebody in their place for being a dick, you make the world a little bit of a better place. And from ABC Deca. Hey Finn, what do you think of Attila? They've got the groove, but the lyrics, meh. Do they deserve a video or maybe if I make it to viewer comments? Okay, here's my honest opinion about Attila, which, you know, at this point, it's basically Franz's band, right? So really what we're saying is, what is my opinion of Chris, of Franz? And I think he is A, a really talented vocalist. Like if you listen to About That Life, like the amount of different styles and tones and inflection he does on that is fucking crazy. Like those are some of the best like extreme vocals you will ever hear. That guy is super talented. Uh, I think they have a lot of good songs. He's a really, really smart guy, entrepreneurial, he hustles. A lot of you guys know this, but he has a clothing line called Stay Sick, which from what I can understand is pretty successful. Successful. He has a record label, Stay Sick Records. So with all of that being said, my honest opinion is that I really wish he would stop being an edgelord because Chris is a smart guy. I think he's got a lot more to add to the conversation than just a bunch of like dick jokes and whatever stuff they sing about. I know that it's scary to like change your direction and I know that it probably feels like if I stop being edgy, nobody's gonna pay attention. But look, the clock's ticking anyway. Like you can't be an edgelord for the rest of your life. So the sooner you make the change, the easier it's gonna be right? So that is what I think about Attila. Really talented guy, really smart guy. I just wish that he would maybe change direction a little bit. That's my personal opinion.
from Sojaboni or however you say it. Can you make your videos available at higher bit rate? Like much higher, getting crushed blacks here and very noticeable compression artifact. This is the guy from like the, I wish I was at home listening to Swan's meme where he says the music at this party is too low bit rate from Tank Mouse Productions. Finn, I would love to see you do a video from your perspective on all the interesting scene, fashion trends, the good, bad, and the ugly. And I am 36, I know I need to get rid of my chain wallet, but I just can't seem to do it. Dude, this is actually a great idea for a video. I'm definitely gonna do this, and I'm definitely gonna include chain wallets and dickies in that video. From Taunting Glaciers. Ha ha ha, talk about cringe thumbnails. This one is the best. So here's what he's talking about. The best piece of advice I ever got on thumbnails is from my friend Ryan Bruce Fluff, the guitar YouTuber. He said that when it comes to thumbnails, if you're not cringe you're not trying hard enough. The fact of the matter is that click-through matters a ton on YouTube. Like if people don't click on your video, they're never gonna watch it, right? And if they don't watch your video, you don't get subscriptions, you don't make ad money, like nothing happens unless they click on your videos. So the reason why I do those is A, because it helps the channel grow, and B, I think it's kind of funny just to make like the stupidest, most cringy clickbait thumbnail I possibly can. And again, on the Screamo cover video from Troa71. What do you think of the whole, I liked their earlier stuff, Syndrome. It seems like you have it for Screamo. It bugs me a bit when I feel it. All right, I think you got me there. I was trying to think of a clever rebuttal for this, but I couldn't come up with one, which means he's probably right. And you know, honestly, that's one of the reasons people ask me why I read the comments. And that is the reason why, because I like to realize when I'm wrong and you guys are smart. You guys point things out in the comments all the time that either I got wrong or maybe there's something I didn't think about or I should consider it from another angle, whatever. And again, I'm always happy to admit when I'm wrong. And speaking of being wrong, uh, on that same video from Nick Pompton, what I was saying in the video is how our last night's covers are much more popular than their originals, so he brings up a good point. You compared the views of covers Our Last Night did like five years ago to a record they just released two months ago. I get your point that their covers get more attention than their original music, but that's not a fair comparison. And actually, he is totally right. And just to be clear, I didn't do that on purpose. I was just a little bit sloppy. So Nick, thank you for calling me out on that. Good point. Two more, one from Tim Hansford. Your Nike shirt sucks. And from Steve Kudzilla. Wow, hey kids, don't take music advice from people with shitty taste in music or douchebags with corporate logos on their clothes. So I wear a lot of Nike stuff and people seem to really dislike that. I guess because Nike is, you know, a sportswear brand and so therefore it's for jocks and not punk, right? I don't know, you guys tell me. I'm very interested in why people seem so put off by the way that I dress. Next one from Eric Sandoval on my new metal video. I literally thought that was Tom Morello in the thumbnail. That's an interesting one. That is the first time I've ever been compared to Tom Morello, but uh, hey, I'll take it. And next one from ABC Deca. This is on a video I made about a year ago uh, about self-doubt, about specifically about all the things that I was doubting myself about then, like the way I look and the way I sound and that my videos don't get as many views as they want, blah, blah, blah. So he said, So have you watched this video after getting bigger? Yes, I have watched it since then. And actually I feel just as insecure about all those things or actually probably even more insecure about them because now whatever feelings I had, you know, at that time I had 400 subscribers or something and now whatever feelings I had are multiplied by 100,000 people that are subscribed to this channel now. I still hate the way I look. I still hate the way I sound. I still feel like shit when one of my videos doesn't do as well as I wish it would. And you've probably heard other YouTubers say the same thing, like that if you have any kind of self-esteem issue or insecurity that as your channel grows, like that stuff is gonna get worse and you're gonna have to learn how to deal with it. It's all true. And the larger lesson, which I don't know, sounds kind of corny, I guess, but it's true, is that these feelings of like self-doubt and insecurity and stuff like that, they don't go away with quote unquote success. Like money or attention or you know validation from strangers on the internet telling you how smart and cool you are or whatever, like it doesn't change anything because those feelings actually, the only person who can change those, the only way that those feelings will go away is if you come to terms with them, if you learn how to control your own psychology. So yes, I feel just as insecure as I ever did and I need to work on that and it doesn't matter if I get a million or 10 million subscribers, that's only gonna go away if I learn how to deal with it. It's not not gonna change based on whatever like view counts or ad revenue I get. Next one from Walker McMurdo. I would be very interested to hear your thoughts on the rise of Pitchfork approved slash critically acclaimed heavy bands like Power Trip and Def Heaven who rose out of the metal world and into greater popularity. In my opinion, Converge was the band to pioneer this kind of career path, which appears to strike a good middle ground between financial slash career success and maintaining artistic integrity. That's actually a really good idea. Uh, I don't know exactly what to say about that, but I think you're on the right track and that is a great idea for a video. Let me know what you think about that in the comments if anybody has anything to add to that. Because that is a super interesting 
interesting trend to see. And last one from Randall E. When I watch your video, it reminds me of the old music video shows from the 90s and early 2000s on MTV. Yes, I love hearing that because I love those shows. I sincerely, non-ironically think MTV was so ahead of the curve, like MTV and all the Viacom networks like VH1 and Fuse and all those were so ahead of the curve in terms of the kind of content they were doing back then. I'm definitely going to do a video about how MTV changed the game for, you know, basically content and media in general because they're hugely influential on me, hugely influential on the scene in ways that I think a lot of people don't understand and I would love to talk about that. So I'm glad that you see the resemblance. All right, guys, that's it for me. As I've said in some of my other videos, I read every single comment. So thank you very much to all of you who leave them. Like that is genuinely my favorite part of this whole thing is talking with everybody who watches and supports in the Facebook group or on my Patreon, whatever. And speaking of my Patreon, I wanted to again remind you that that exists. <laughs> so if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's a link below. And I wanna thank the patrons who support me at the true cult level. Michael B, Ryan W, Andy M, Justin H, Jeff W, Nicholas G, and Anthony C. You guys are true cult fans and I appreciate all of you very much. So yeah, that's it for now. I'm gonna sign off for now, but I will see you next time.